done. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, let's go. When Disney first bought Lucasfilm, I thought it was great news. I liked what they had been doing with the MCU up until that time, albeit there wasn't much being done. We were four years into the MCU, but it was a pretty solid four years, if you remember correctly. You gotta, you gotta remember it was a pretty solid four years. So I was, I was very excited. And then they announced they're getting rid of the 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 books, the EU books, and they were getting rid of Clone Wars. Clone Wars was was done. They're like, this is done. We're not gonna continue it anymore. No! And they gave us this thing called Star Wars Rebels. And season one wasn't met favorably by a lot of the older fans anyway. It wasn't, you know, people weren't clamoring for it. They didn't love it. But then it, it got to the finale. And the finale had a nice little surprise character. This character called Fulcrum, who had been feeding the Rebels information all season, was finally revealed, and it was Ahsoka Tano. And it was great, and then she played a role in season two. And all of a sudden, the show really, like, picked up, and it really evolved into, like, Star Wars mastery, I thought. I thought it was one of the better Star Wars. I, it was, it was, I liked it better than a lot of the Clone Wars. Not all the Clone Wars, but I liked it better than a lot of Clone Wars. The stories that they were doing after season one, when we, st when we started, they got their feet wet, and we started getting the meat of what was going on. And then by season three, Ezra Bridger was like, is he going to be bad? Is he going to be, like, what's going on with Ezra here? And that kept me intrigued, and I'm like, this is. It started off as like a children's children's show, and it would, it would get dark, but it never got too dark. It always just it knew like where its ceiling was, in terms of that, and I always respected it for that. I was like, oh man, this show's so good. It kept going, and then I was really hoping, really hoping that Ezra would go to the dark side, and, and he never did. And at one point, you realize he's not going to go to the dark side, but then. I went to Star Wars Celebration. We watched the first episode, the first two episodes of the final season, and they were very Mandalore heavy. And up until that time, I wasn't a massive Mandalore fan. The Mandalorian is what made me a Mandalore fan. I wasn't a massive Mandalorian fan up until that point. I just wasn't. It wasn't like whenever they did Mandalorian stuff on Clone Wars and I just was like, it's fine. I, I love Darth Maul, so I was into like the Darth Maul stuff. But that you know, for the most part, I was like, yeah, this is fine. Whatever, I could do with it or without it whatever it doesn't really matter then the season as a whole played out and i was like i was more invested in mandalore in that not as much as when mandalorian came but i was more invested in mandalore but i was like and it ended so strong with thrawn and ezra and then they did like the wrap-up video the voiceover by sabine and i was like this is a brilliant show but ezra bridger was always a character that stood out for various reasons obviously they killed kane and off spoilers but ezra was a character Born, I believe, the same day as Luke and Leia. Same skill set, you know, Jedi, all that. And every, the question was always, well, he's got to die. And if he doesn't die, what happens to him? And so they kind of answered that by the Purgle and, and sending him off into space. And he's been gone since, you know, through all the OT. And it's a little bit of a, a cop out, but it is what it is. Now we got him back in the Mandoverse. And Ahsoka season one is all about finding Ezra. And when they find him, you're like, okay, but why, why is it important to find Ezra? For a fan of Rebels, we know why. Well, we, for us, it's important because we like Ezra. We want to see Ezra come back. But for a casual fan of Normie, there's no real understanding or explanation as to why they need him. Obviously, he's a Jedi. We learn all this stuff. But what's so important about Ezra Bridger? Why do we need Ezra Bridger back? Why does Sabine need him back? Because of an emotional connection? There's something bigger at play here in my mind. I'm thinking about it. I, you know, it could even be tied to Balin's skull and what he's trying to find. It could I mean, he could be searching for Ezra without knowing it. He's not. He's not. Don't get me wrong. He's not. I'm just spitballing as I talk. <laughs> so what is with Ezra? And I started thinking. I'm wrapping my head around it. I'm like, you know what? What if they are po posing him to be the most important character slash most powerful character in the galaxy? Now... No, no, that's not going to work. Look. Not going to work? What are you talking about? The, the OT fans, the Luke Skywalker fans are all up in arms when I say that because it's Luke Skywalker. And I don't necessarily disagree. It's not true. That's impossible. But I think the time of Luke Skywalker has passed us by. No! Maybe unfortunately, depending on how you look at it. If you didn't like, if you didn't appreciate or like his arc in the sequel trilogy, then definitely unfortunately. But the reality is... 
the time to use Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker was around the prequel trilogy when that came out, and they didn't use it, and then they waited. You know, Disney didn't buy it until 2012. The movie came up three years later. It's not like they it's not like they really were dragging their feet on it. You know, they they did a movie only a few years after they they bought they purchased the company. So you can't really blame them for it. But Mark Hamill, look, he got up in age. So you can't unless you recast, you can't go back. They tried that with solo and it failed. And here's the thing, when you're looking at it as a business as a, as a business if one fails, you know, the way they look at it and the shareholders and they look at it, they're like recasting these original characters isn't working. Don't do it again. That's right. So they're probably not going to ever recast Luke Skywalker. And that's why you get an AI Luke and, and Boba Fett and Mandalorian with digital voicing and Mark Hamill actually being there. You know, like Mark Hamill, I don't think was there for any other pur- purpose than PR for getting the fans to be on board with his portrayal in, in, Mandalorian and Boba Fett. I think that's really why why they had Mark Hamill there, to be completely honest with you. So you have to take Luke Skywalker out of the equation because he's not getting younger and they're not going to recast him. And if you do the AI thing, fans are either going to freak out or it's just it's going to be too costly and it's just, it's just not going to look right. And, you know, you don't want to do anything like that. So I think, I, I think they're trying to build their own foundation. They're using characters that fans have gravitated to already. Ray, they're trying to get this Ray movie going. Ron, I know what you're going to say. They're trying to get this Ray movie going. It's hitting all these blockades. But the Ezra Bridger is standing up because Ezra Bridger lives through the original trilogy. And we don't know where he's going to be in the sequel trilogy yet. We don't know where his path leads to during that time. Maybe he gets sucked into another Purgle and and he's out in some other unknown region <laughs> during the sequels. And every time a new Star Wars trilogy comes, he just, just gets it's flown into another unknown unknown galaxy, unknown regions. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. But I want to pose this and say that they are, for whatever reason, I don't know how or when or what the end game is yet, but maybe we'll talk about that in this video. But they are poising Ezra Bridger to be the most powerful, the most important character in the galaxy. He is... Not Ray, it is Ezra Bridger, is the new Luke Skywalker, and they're going to build with through him, through the Ahsoka series. There are rumors that he's going to be a Mandalorian and Grogu. Of course, the actor shut that right down, but, you know, so did Andrew Garfield. He wasn't going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home. He said he was not going to be in No Way Home. So that's what I think there. Now I want to get into just this little conversation, little talking points about Ezra Bridger, about what I think about him and how he could be the most important character in the Disney era of Star Wars. And let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree, disagree? Do you like Ezra, hate Ezra? Or are you still mad that Luke Skywalker is not the most important character? From the moment he was introduced in Star Wars Rebels, he has been portrayed as a unique, Force-sensitive individual, not only because of his potential, but also due to his unconventional path. While Ezra might be the most traditionally powerful Jedi in terms of raw combat strength, his true power lies in his connection to the Force in a deeply spiritual and instinctive way. From early on, we see him connect with animals and living beings in a way that no other Jedi has demonstrated so frequently. This ability to bond with creatures like the Lothwolves or the Purgle shows a profound link to the living Force, which makes him incredibly powerful in non-traditional ways. Ezra is someone who respects life, balance, and the deeper currents of the Force. More than just wielding a lightsaber, he uses the Force to communicate, to influence, and to connect with others, which gives him a form of power that's less obvious, but potentially even more significant than brute strength. In Ahsoka, the witches of Dathomir are quick to notice Sabine Wren, but cannot locate Ezra Bridger. And if you're wondering why, let's dig a little bit into it. How about that? First, we have to consider the key elements. First, the witches of Dathomir or the Night Sisters draw their power from magic. Magic, which is a form of the dark side, deeply rooted in the physicality and mystical energies of Dathomir. Sabine, though not a Jedi, is someone who is actively interacting with the Force at a novice level. She is learning, but more importantly, She is open to the Force in a raw and unrefined way, making her a beacon of sorts that can be picked up by those attuned to mystical energies like the witches. On the other hand, Ezra has spent years in exile, surviving in isolation, and has probably honed his ability to mask his presence. He's learned to live without 
making ripples in the force likely a survival tactic to avoid detection from hostile entities, including the witches. This isn't necessarily about Ezra being weaker or Zabine being stronger. It's about Ezra understanding the nuances of the force and how to conceal himself when necessary. Something that would be crucial in a place like Peridia, where dark powers reside. Mm -hmm. So, what does Ezra's return mean for the galaxy after Ahsoka Season 1? Ezra represents a bridge between the past and the future of the Jedi Order. He was trained by Kanan Jarrus, a Jedi of the Old Republic era, but he also lived through the rise of the Empire and now exists in a time where the Jedi are a fragmented memory. Ezra's survival and return signify hope, not just for rebuilding the Jedi, but for rethinking what it means to be a Jedi in this new era. Ezra's role might be more about teaching balance and understanding the Force in a broader sense rather than just engaging in warfare. He's lived through the consequences of galactic war, seen the toll it takes, and learned that the Force is more than just a tool for combat in a galaxy still recovering from the scars of the Empire. Ezra could serve as a guide for a new generation, helping them see the Force not just as a weapon, but as a way to live in harmony with the galaxy. His connection to the Purgle and the cosmic forces beyond the known galaxy might suggest that Ezra is more in tune with deeper mysteries of the universe. Mysteries that the likes of Luke Skywalker or even Ahsoka Tano may not fully comprehend. Ezra could be key to unlocking new aspects of the Force, ones that extend beyond the traditional dichotomy of Jedi and Sith into a future where the Force is understood in its entirety. Ezra Bridger's power is not only his ability, but his understanding of the Force as something deeper and more universal. His evasion from the Witches of Dathomir shows how he's learned to exist in balance with the Force, and his future role could be pivotal in guiding the galaxy into a new era of Force users who transcend the old boundaries of Jedi and Sith. What do you think? Could Ezra Bridger be the bridge? Could he be the bridge? It's in his name! It's in his name! What do you guys think? Is Ezra Bridger's role going to be to guide new Force sensitives forward? Will he have a big role in the sequel trilogy adjacent to what we saw? What is going to happen? Is he just going to perish? Is Thrawn just going to shoot him in the head dead? That's it. Done. Ezra Bridger's out of here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may the Force of others be with you.